If you want to climb a ladder on a water tower Then we'll kick it with the stars for a couple hours If you want to, then we're gonna get away up high I grew up in Daytona Beach, Florida. I'm the youngest of my th two older brothers, so I'm the youngest of three. And I grew up on a horse farm. I grew up on about 12-acre horse farm. And I remember growing up, my dad never forced us music on us at all. It was uh, we had the only for uh, music ever forced on us was we had this huge jukebox um, right out by this area by our pool. Um, it was covered though, and my dad that was the only way he forced music on us. He wanted us to just have music going all the time, but we got to choose what we played. And uh, it had Patsy Cline on there. It had Beach Boys on there. It had. Johnny Be Good, it had um, probably my favorite song on the whole jukebox is uh, You've Lost That Love and Feeling, because my favorite movie is Top Gun, um, the year after I was born. And uh, But that was the only memory I have of music as a kid until my brothers started playing two artists when I was um, probably going into middle school. Um, they played two artists real heavily all the time. It was a Chris Ledoux album and a, um, a Garth Brooks album. And... So those are the two guys that I started falling in love with country. That's the way I fell in love with country music. And then I got into high school and started uh, the, the probably the biggest artist that I loved listening to was Kenny Chesney. Um, getting into high school because he sang about what I was living. He's singing about I go back and I was living that moment of, of him going back. Then I moved to North Carolina. I moved my way to North Carolina when I was 11 years old. Um, and played high school football there. Football was my life. Football was everything. Um, but country music was, uh, was something I've been passionate about since I was, you know, 10, 11 years old. And I just, I remember taking one video. Um, I wish I knew the chords. I don't even know how, how it goes now, but, uh, it was a Garth Brooks song, Thunder Rolls. And, uh, I was sitting there, we'd do home videos, me and my buddies, just Tom Green style, just having fun, joking around. And I'm sitting there strumming, faking, faking guitar. This was in high school. I'm a senior in high school faking guitar, playing Thunder Rolls to Garth Brooks. And uh, I remember thinking at that moment, I was like, man, it'd be so sweet if I learned how to play this thing. Um, and then I forgot about it. Um, so football was my focus and got a fo uh, full ride to University of North Carolina to play linebacker. Um, that was about 30 pounds ago. I'm a little guy now, but I was, I was big back in the day. And um, so I went to North Carolina, and it was my freshman summer going into uh, – went that whole year and then going into my sophomore year that the year after my freshman year so my sophomore summer um we had a kid named ben lemming um on our football team so we were all in the dorms summer school we didn't really have a whole lot to do we just had to be there to train and take a couple classes and ben had this guitar and he's sitting there playing and i'm sitting there singing in the dorm room and ben was real good with uh dave matthews and and some back then zach brown songs and um so Ben's sitting there strumming, playing this guitar, and I'm singing. And he looks at me, he says, "He says, man, you should, uh, you should be a country music singer." And I, uh, he was dead serious, and I just laughed it off. I was like, "Okay, let me go, let me go do that real quick." And uh, but that summer, Ben taught me how to play a G chord, G, D, E minor, and C. That's all I knew, and then I think I learned the A. But um, so I learned all those chords. That was all I knew, and. I learned how to play, I think, Whiskey Lullaby, a couple other country songs, and I started learning how to play guitar my sophomore summer. And so that's the first time I ever learned how to play guitar, but I was, you know, with most things in life, most people pick up a guitar and just put it down right away. They're not any good. And uh, for some reason, I stuck with it. I love playing the guitar. Playing football, that was still my main focus, and I, I was, the NFL was what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the NFL um, and, and, and play and play in the league, and uh, that was the plan. And then going into my junior year, I was preseason, you know, doing great. Uh, started on everything in defense. It was my it was my year. It was my time to shine. And uh, first game of the season, second quarter, we were playing James Madison, and I hit the quarterback, took him to the ground. My foot stayed in the ground, but both our bodies went completely to my left, and I snapped uh, a tendon in my ankle. And Ended up base ended up ruining that entire year. I was out for the season. Got surgery about a week later, um, and then basically I wasn't really full speed until halfway through my senior year. So that whole year that I was off, the only thing to do was to 
rehab, lift weights, upper body, because I couldn't do lower body, and I learned to play guitar a little bit better. Um, so music was still not even a thing, even close to it was just a passion of mine. It was never a profession thought. I was still determined to get back and play football. Um, and I got back and played the last six games of my senior year. Um, ended up starting the last game against Duke. Had a great game. You know, at least proved to myself that I could play if I'd have just been healthy. Um, but that senior year, going into that senior year, uh, my dad passed away. Um, so the only way for me to ever deal with it I guess was to write a song. I don't. I don't know where it came from. It just one night. I remember sitting about a week after my dad died. I remember sitting in my dorm or in my house in college, and I picked up the guitar and I started the original chords that I'd learned, G, D, and C. Um, picked it up and wrote a song about my dad. Um, and uh, I actually sat down a couple weeks later because I couldn't finish the song. I sat down with Brian Kelly from Florida Georgia Line, who was one of my best friends from the time I was a little kid probably three or four years old, we played soccer together down in Daytona Beach, Florida. But Brian and I sit down to finish the song. We get it how we want it. Um, then I'm like, well, that was fun. You know, it was a tough subject, but uh, I loved writing songs. Absolutely loved it. A couple weeks later, you know, me and my buddy go down to the University of Georgia on a bye week, and, and I meet this girl from Georgia, so I wrote a song called Georgia Girl. Um, and I realized, you know, the, the up-tempo songs were a lot more – fun to sing to all these college girls uh you know when they'd come over to the house or before we'd go out to go out on the town on a saturday night whatever and um so i, I kept writing songs and, I, and it, I realized as soon as you start pick up a guitar start learning how to write and sing or even just singing songs that are cover songs it uh it definitely makes you have a much better time when you're in college and it's for me it was just to get the girls simple as that um, and out of boredom, and the songwriting came from the inspiration to lose my dad, and um, put all that together. I finished my senior year and uh, didn't have a job. Had a little bit of money saved up from um, from the per diems that we got at University of North Carolina, and so I decided to go into a studio there in Carborough, North Carolina, and recorded about 10, 13 songs, somewhere between there, and um, released my own record. It was my first record that I ever put out. It probably sold three or four hundred copies. That's it. Um, but it, it was it was music to me, and it was music the way I wanted to make it, and the only way I could afford to make it, and the way I, only way I knew to make it at the time. And uh, so throughout that making that record, I I kept in contact with Brian from FGO, and um, he was living in Nashville, and he said, "Dude, come visit Nashville." And I had recently gotten a job at Hendrick Motorsports to be in pit crew. Um, but we had to, we had a weekend off, so I was working the pit crew. This was I was making the record, working the pit crew. So I was kind of doing two jobs at one time. But my heart was in music, but I was getting paid by Hendrick Motorsports, and it was the best race team in the world. So I couldn't turn that down. Um, and it was a great group of guys around me and a great great friends there at Hendrick Motorsports. But my heart was still in music, and and Brian said, "Come on to Nashville." So I went for the weekend. And uh, hung at his house, and it was my first time ever in Nashville. And we did a writer's round at Hotel Indigo. And it was Brian to my left, Tyler to my right. And uh, he says to me before we go on stage, he, before we go on stage that night, he says, man, we're uh, we're working on this new duo called Florida Georgia Line. We think it's, you know, my buddy Tyler, we'll meet him later. I think it's going to work. And uh, clearly he was right, but I was sitting there uh, that first night in Nashville, sitting between the two. We did a writer's round. They played songs. I played songs. And... And uh, that was when I first ever sang into a microphone. And uh, fast forward a couple months, and I got the opportunity to do Survivor, the TV show, um, while I was working at NASCAR. And that basically ended my job at NASCAR because I went and did Survivor that summer. I came back, and I was about 35 pounds lighter because I made it all the way to the end and, and uh, ended up losing a million dollars by one vote. So uh, that's that one still hurts a little bit, but... Uh, Sorry, I'd, I'd have a lot more of these McPherson guitars if I would have won that that million dollars, but uh, but I didn't. And uh, the next weekend when I got back from Survivor, um, I called up Brian again. He said, he said, yeah, dude, come to Nashville. We're here all weekend. Um, so I went and um, I came came here to Nashville. And Brian had just had a roommate move out of his house, and uh, him and Brian, him and Tyler were living together. And uh, so I, by the end of that day, I basically talked them into letting me move into their house and they said yeah man we'd love to have you so they were 
doing their Florida Georgia line thing at the time and and uh, just starting really. And so I moved into their house. We started writing songs. Um, about a year and a half after that, I, we really took those those chords that I learned, the G, D, minor C, which is how I play it live. We really took those to a whole nother level. Uh, Brian, Tyler, and I, we were all together and uh, we wrote the song Cruise. And uh, that song from then on, it was like, we were writing a bunch before that, but from then on, it was we, we found something that we were really good at. And uh, they especially took that to the next level. Joey Moore produced it. And, and took it to be our very first number one song as songwriters, their very first number one as a, as a duo. And um, the rest is history with them. Um, but I got a record deal shortly after that, after a lot of touring and a lot of just trying to play music for anybody. And um, shortly after that, I met Chris Stefano, who's my producer. And uh, we wrote, our very first song that we ever wrote together was Ready, Set, Roll. And Ready, Set, Roll ended up going uh, platinum. It was my very first top five song and and uh, my very first single that, that I ever put out. But um, And now here we are sitting on my second single, which is top five right now, Gonna Want It Tonight. And that's my insane last five or six years in a nutshell. It's been wild, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And, and uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing what we got next. Ready, say, let's roll. Ready, say, let's ride. Get your little fine self on the step, shimmy up inside. Slide, girl, by my side, girl. Yeah, we can run this town. I can rock your world. You roll them down, fog them up, cruise around, get stuck. Pedal to the metal till the sun comes up. Make a deal with the man on the moon. Gonna put up some overtime, I got all night. Ready, say, let's roll. The first time I ever, I'd seen these McPherson guitars and I, I just thought they were strange looking. I was like, what, is that the guitar with the hole on the top? Um, but I like that kind of thing. Anything that's different, I'm all about. And I was, I was like, man, I, I gotta get one of those. So, so I, uh, I went to the store and they didn't have any. Um, so all of a sudden, at, this was at the time, FGL was out with uh, Jake Owen. And Brian comes home, we're living together. And he has one of these McPherson guitars in the living room. I'm like, dude, you ended up getting one? He was like, man, I was, you know, we're out with Jake right now and Jake's, Jake's literally one of the most generous people I've ever met. He says, Jake had an extra one, so he was like, here man, just try it. Take it for a while, see how you like it. So Jake gave his, one of his McPherson's to Brian. Brian brings it home. I'm playing it and then Brian's out on tour all the time and he had, he just has it at the house because he didn't want to, he didn't want to ding it up. So that was my first introduction to a McPherson guitar. The thing I love most about McPherson's, I don't I don't know how to word it other than it's just the smoothest guitar, acoustic guitar I've ever played. And it's the closest thing I've ever played to. I love the feel of electric guitars, man. The necks are just real, um, the action's real low. They're real smooth. That's the only way I know how to word it. And you, you just effortlessly play across the guitar on electrics. And the, and the McPherson's are the closest things I've ever seen to an electric guitar. And some of them that I've even played play even better than than an electric guitar and i'm an acoustic guy I, uh, electric guitars are fun but i'm an acoustic guy but the the feel of the guitar is the smoothest neck i've ever put my hands on and it just it's so easy to play it's effortless and then you go on about the make of the guitar i mean you pick these things up in my guitar my first mcpherson now has scrapes all across here um when i first got it i was afraid to even use it on stage because they're literally the most beautiful well-made guitar that you that I've ever seen um, and now I'm glad that I've gotten used to it and I can actually not be scared to pick it up and play it on stage but it's uh if you just pick one up I mean they're clearly a lot of money goes into these and and uh, it's just the next level it's a whole nother guitar that that you really don't see outside of anything other than McPherson I can 